Hello everyone and welcome to your healthier choice. I am Dr. Robin Rupnarain and we are coming to you live from our studios at Olira Heights in San Fernando. On tonight's program, we will be discussing climate change and its impact on our health. In studio with me tonight is Ms. Janice Tyson. Ms. Tyson is a public health researcher public health researcher and is part of the Climate Change and Health Leaders Fellowship at the University of the West Indies. Ms. Tyson also has a Master's in Environmental Management. As usual tonight, guys, our numbers should come up at the bottom of your screens. And feel free to send in your questions and comments on the topic, and we'll do our very best to answer them during the program. So guys, it's an important topic tonight. Let's talk about our environment, and let's talk about the impact of our environment on our health. So guys, let's Let's say hello to Miss Janice Tyson. Janice, welcome to the program. Welcome to your health, your choice. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to have you, Janice. It's mm -hmm. a pleasure. Um, Janice, it's a it's a real um, it's a very important topic. It's yes. it's very topical, so to speak. Everyone's mm -hmm. talking about climate change. Um, we see it in the news that, that the leaders from all over the world are gathered, they're having discussions mm -hmm. on it. Um, we see different programs and policies coming out all throughout the world. Yeah. And um, and uh, and us here in the program, we just want to know. How do these policies and programs and climate change affect us at, at our everyday level, which is at our health level, which is what I'm concerned about mm -hmm. and our audience is concerned about as well. Yes. So, Janice, I suppose, um, very simply, sometimes we use terms um, and we don't really understand the meanings of terms. Mm -hmm. hey, let's tell our audience, what is climate change? Okay, so <coughs> first things first, yeah. when we're talking about climate change, we need mm -hmm. to understand what is the climate first of all. Right. Um, and the climate really refers to the long-term weather patterns that exist in an area. So yeah. you're talking about the average weather patterns. So yes. For example, some people, you hear them refer to they live in a tropical climate. That yes. means the, the average climate is usually warm. Yes. Or a temperate climate means the average weather is usually cold. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about climate, we're really talking about that long-scale weather pattern. Mm -hmm. And so when we're talking about climate change, we're talking about the persistent change in that average over time. Right. Um, so for example, what we have seen, for example, in a certain country or an area, mm -hmm. let's say in 2010, mm -hmm. the average daily temperature might have been 30 degrees Celsius. Mm -hmm. But then by 2015, mm -hmm. the average daily temperature is 32 degrees. And then by 2020, it's 34. So right. you've seen a gradual change over a long right. And that's happening all over the world? Pretty much, yes. All right. Um, so the change is, is basically what you said. It, the name is self-explanatory. Climate yes. change means a change in the regular climate that you have custom. Yes, to. correct. Um, big question. Are we seeing the effects of climate change here in Trinidad and Tobago? Absolutely, we are. I mean, you don't have to look further than the events of last month with the extreme rainfall we had. Mm -hmm. um, what we're seeing, what happens with climate change really, is that we're seeing more extremes in weather patterns. Mm -hmm. So for example, in Trinidad, we have a dry and a wet season. Yes. So what we're seeing is that the dry season is becoming more dry. You're getting more droughts. Right. And in the wet season, you're getting more rainfall, more intense rainfall. So what we happen to see is that you're getting those extremes in the weather. So that's what's happening in Trinidad right now. How long has that been happening in Trinidad, Janine? That has probably been happening for maybe 10 to 15 years. And right. if, if people really think about it, you can say you can see even the daily temperature outside. Yeah. I'm sure people can say when they were younger, yeah. it never used to feel as hot as it does outside now. Right. And I'm sure people realize that the temperature now is much higher than it used to be. And for example, look at the mm -hmm. flooding we had recently. Right. Normally you would find, not normally, in the past, yes. you'd find that scale of flooding or that intense rainfall would really be associated with the passage of a tropical disturbance or a hurricane. Yes. But that was just, a, that event was just a regular weekend. We had no kind of, yeah. you know, extreme but, but my question, circumstances my question, happening. My question, and, and the question of mm -hmm. many people, like if you listen to radio, you listen to people talking to my patients in the office, right. um, how do you know that, how do we know that that's an effect of climate change or just an effect of 
just a bad weather pattern or, or just a, a, just a, a, a rainier um, episode than normal. Because as far as I can remember, I mean, since I'm a boy, Trinidad has had floods. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, growing up, central flooding, south flooding, mm -hmm. east bear, Rangwa's flooding. Um, it didn't seem like it changed because it's still flooding. Right. So how could you say that we are having climate change that is causing this flooding? Okay, so what we, what we have to remember too is climate mm -hmm. is a global phenomenon. So right. not just localized to Trinidad. I understand your so point. So what yes. we are seeing is that we're seeing these trends take place. There's evidence in a lot of countries, additionally in Trinidad. So okay. for example, like you're saying, yes, there have always been floods in yeah. Central or South, but what we're seeing is we're getting, it's happening more frequently okay. and the extent is much more, it's more intense than it used to happen right. in the past. All right. Mm -hmm. um, now that's the, that's the effect of climate change that we're seeing, right, mm -hmm. here, here in Trinidad. Um, I just want to take care a little bit regionally and maybe a little bit internationally. Right. What is the effects of what what if how what evidence or what what if I could use a medical term symptoms of climate change are we seeing in, in the Caribbean and, and further afield? Okay, so if we're talking physical effects, we have been it, yes. we have been seeing physical effects on the environment. We have yes. been seeing an increase in air temperature yes. and sea temperature and sea temperature sea surface temperature is something that's important because the <coughs> ocean tends to trap a lot of the heat from the environment so if we're tracking it and we see that the sea surface temperatures are increasing that's how we know that the air temperature is also increasing as well I understand. so we're also seeing the climate models have predicted that we're seeing more intense storms which the evidence has shown that we're seeing more intense storms mm -hmm. in the Caribbean region luckily we are just below the belt in Trinidad, so mm -hmm. you find that we don't really experience it, mm -hmm. but across the island chain we've been seeing more intense storms, so right. the evidence is there regionally as well. Right, so we see it, we basically try, I mean, what I, what I interpret that to mean is that we're going to see weather patterns that are more extreme to what we are accustomed to. Yes, that is But it is does correct. not necessarily mean that the weather is going to change dramatically, but it's just more extremities, yeah. uh, more severities yes. of, more of, severities. of, of the um, systems. Yes, yeah, so you're seeing more, ex more towards the extremes. All right. Mm. Um, recently in, in, um, in Europe during the summer, right, mm -hmm. it, it was extremely hot. Like, I, I've been to England, I've been to Europe before, and I've been, I've been hearing temperatures over the summer there in July that went up to like 40 degrees, right? Yes. And they were saying that's the hottest summer mm -hmm. on record in, in England, I think, for 100 years or of all time. Mm -hmm. um, is that a direct effect of climate change, or is that just a very hot summer? That's, that's the effect of climate change. So actually, if we could hmm. pull up um, slide five, um, what we have been seeing is that the 10, okay. the last 10 hottest years on record yeah. have all taken place from tw 2006 to recently. So what we're seeing is that you're getting, like I said, you're getting more and more extreme events. So for example, in European countries where there is winter and summer, yeah. the winters are getting yeah. colder, and you're getting summers. colder snaps, and then in the summers it's, it's more extreme heat. All right, so that graph is showing us those years, and those are the last 10, those are the 10 highest on record. The and hottest years on and the we're seeing like record. 20, 14, 15, 16, 16 17, 17, 18, 20, All right, 20. so that's the most recent years. Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. so that, that sort of confirms that we are seeing the effect of yes. climate change. Um, so, so I heard one commentator, right, um, said, said to the English, he said, well, enjoy it because that's the coolest summer you'll ever have. And it's, it's true. Unless we take ex we take action to <coughs> prevent the climate change that we as humans are causing, yeah. it is a possibility that this summer that they have had yeah. will be the coolest summer they will have in future. All right, so bringing that back home, logically, <laughs> and a little bit scarily as well, is this the driest rainy season we'll ever have in Trinidad? So. Don't get me wrong, there yeah. are always anomalies. Yeah. So there might be one year where yeah. you'll find you'll get more rain than others. But yeah. the trend, the evidence has shown across the Caribbean, not just Trinidad, yeah. that we are going to have more, more and severe right. droughts so your point, and more your point being, this might be the norm? Yes, this is the norm that we're seeing now. And it could get worse? It could. All right. So, um, all right, so we, we talked about climate change, we talked about the effect that we've seen it in, in what, are we, what, are, what else are we seeing regionally um, other than the, the increase in, in storms or, or, or hurricanes? Mm -hmm. what, what are the effects other than the, than the storms, hurricanes, rain, dryness, heat are we seeing in the Caribbean or is there any other? 
So because we live somewhere, live in a region where we really only have two seasons, the yeah. dry and wet seasons, those yeah. are the most extreme. But other yeah. effects that we are seeing yeah. is a lot of countries are reporting that they are seeing large die-offs in their coral reefs because right. corals are very temperature sensitive. temperature sensitive. So once the temperature goes too high, they die. Right. So we are seeing effects like that happening. All right. And the major causes of climate change is what? So to put a, a, a misconception to bed. Yeah. Um, and that's a briefly, you know. There are, there yeah. are natural phenomena that cause climate change, yeah. for example, like volcanoes. But volcanoes yeah. tend to have the effect of changing climate, maybe for a short period of time, like six months yeah. or a year. But the climate change that we're seeing now is primarily due to human activity. Right. And when we talk about human activity, we're talking about things like the burning of fossil fuels yeah. for your transport, for yes. your electricity, your power yeah. generation. Yes. You're also seeing, not well, we don't have this so much in the Caribbean, but large-scale farming processes, processes of cattle right. release large amounts of methane, which are mm -hmm. greenhouse gas, which mm -hmm. is what contributes carbon dioxide and methane are the largest contributors to climate change. Right. So it's really, what we're seeing now is really only attributable to human activity. Right, mm -hmm. right. And I suppose the big question is, um, well, another important question is, is pollution, because mm -hmm. in Trinidad, we've, for years before the discussion on climate change, although we've been mm -hmm. discussing it, but it hasn't been any, in the forefront of, of, of our thinking, but we always talked about pollution and littering of our rivers and streams. Does that form part of climate change, and does that, does that contribute to, to changing global weather, weather patterns at all? So, you understand my point? yes, I do understand your yeah. point. Um, but what we think of pollution as just I mean, like, like littering and, and, and people throwing things into the rivers, into the yeah. seas, and people throwing their, their fridge and mattresses mm -hmm. and plastic bottles all over the country. Mm -hmm. um, the, uh, does that contribute to climate change? So, the, the littering of physical items like that don't yeah. necessarily contribute to climate change, but yeah. what it does. It damages the, the environment and it makes the effects of climate change worse. So, for okay. example, if we're seeing, if we know that we're seeing more flooding events, yeah. if you continue the, the pollution, yeah. doesn't the throwing your, your fridge in the river yeah. won't necessarily cause the flood. But what it does is that when it floods, okay, it backs up your waterways right. anyway. So right. it exacerbates, it's exacerbates a situation. Okay, it exacerbates the effect of the climate change of on climate the human change. and cause more human suffering. Yes, that's what it does. So it, it really is a an activity that it hurts yourself more than anything. I understand yeah. the point. Mm -hmm. um, well, the big question, this is a healthcare program. Mm -hmm. um, what is the effect of climate change or the, or the, the change of the, the climate to, to, to negative, to increase temperatures in the air and the seas? How does that affect our health? Okay, so... We, we need to know that because um, we need to prepare. Yes. So there are actually uh, a lot of ways that climate yeah. change affects our health. Because okay. if we think about it, our health is affected by the environment because we need air to breathe, we need right. water to drink, we need food to eat. Right. All those things exist in the environment. So anything right. affecting the environment is going to affect our health. All right. And um, well, we're going to get into it in a little bit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm just here to tell me we need to take a commercial break. No and um, so, guys. We will get back into the program. We will get into the effects of climate change on our health after we take a little word from our sponsors. Just going to appeal to you all to please send in your questions and comments. Tell us what you think. Give us your opinion at home on climate change, what we see, and give us your suggestions. Um, give us the benefit of your um, knowledge and your um, your thinking to, 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 to make a discussion to, to improve everything. All right, guys, so we'll be back in one moment. <clears throat> everyone, I'm Stacy from Stacy's Kitchen. Check out our new episodes, season three of Stacy's Kitchen at our new time, 5.30 p.m. on Mondays and Wednesdays, right here on ACTN The Voice. I will be whipping you up some flavorful and appetizing dishes. As they say, good food makes a good mood. So guys, stay tuned for this culinary explosion right here on Stacy's Kitchen.
On behalf of the management and staff of ACT and The Voice, we want to take this time to wish each and every one of our viewers a very Merry Christmas and a prosperous New Year. ACT and The Voice, formerly known as Acts 25, is your number one family-friendly station, putting morals, values, and family first. We thank you all for your support as we continue to bring you the best in movies, current affairs, kids and classic TV, sports and community affairs, gospel music, and the word. We are ACTN The Voice. Season's greetings, everyone. guys welcome back welcome back we're talking about climate change and impact on our health i'm here with miss janice tyson um, today's a live program today is wednesday the 7th of december 2022 please send in your questions and comments on the topic janice before we left off there we were talking about you're about to get into talking about the effect of climate change on our health tell us yeah. so there are a number of ways that climate change can affect our health and there are really about four ways that that happens um, yeah the main one, the first one is air pollution. Yeah. Second one is precipitation and the water quality that we get. Yeah. We also have extreme heat and drought. Yeah. And we have vector-borne diseases and zoonotic diseases. Okay. So if you'll indulge me, go ahead. I can go a little more in depth in yes, each please, of them. Yes, please, please. So with air pollution, mm -hmm. we're talking about the emissions from cars, um, ash from wildfires, mm -hmm. and a big one that we're seeing lately, Saharan dust. Mm -hmm. um, so air pollution really can exacerbate existing respiratory conditions for people mm -hmm. for who have conditions, example, like asthma, mm -hmm. who suffer with allergies. This air pollution that we get from the smoke, from the wildfires, and the car emissions, mm -hmm. these emissions tend to have very fine particles, something called PM2.5. Mm -hmm. And why these particles are so dangerous is mm -hmm. because when we breathe them in, they are so small that they pass through our lungs and go into our bloodstream. Okay. So these PM 2.5 particles, they actually can cause things like cardiovascular disease, heart attacks, and strokes. So right. air pollution is really something that we need to be cognizant of, especially for people who have pre-existing entities yeah. and who have other respiratory illnesses like asthma and allergies. All right. Yeah. And they're also prolonged exposure to Air pollution like that can also cause things like nerve damage, cancer, birth defects. Um, and what we're actually seeing is that uh, they're in a 2020 World Health Organization report. Mm -hmm. It said that 99% of the world's population mm -hmm. lives in areas where the safe levels for that particular matter 2.5 mm -hmm. is above the safe limit. Right. So we're pretty much all exposed. And the evidence is also showing that there are 6.5 million deaths worldwide, premature deaths from air pollution. So it's right. really a big problem that we're having right. all across the world. Right. Yeah. Um, and that's in terms of respiratory illnesses. Respiratory, but it can also lead to cardiovascular illnesses right. and cancers as well. So, so a little bit, can you just go over what that particle is that you were talking about and re-explain that again, please? No problem. Yeah. So when you <coughs> burn fossil fuels, yeah. it's not just the smoke that you see coming out of your car exhaust or from right. an industry. There's, an, in, yeah. there's a hidden invisible. There's a hidden invisible. There tend to be these fine particles that yeah. you can't see, but they're there. Yeah. And they're called PM 2.5 because that's how small they're they are there like yeah. they're very very tiny yeah and those particles can go in when you breathe them in yeah. they're so small they can go into your bloodstream and that's right. where they can get in to your bloodstream and cause a lot of issues right mm -hmm. um so i suppose uh, me me and me, into, me, me being a general practitioner in the, in the community, I suppose we see a lot of persons coming in with sinusitis, asthma, mm -hmm. respiratory allergies, yes. um, coughing, sneezing. Um, you would also see chest infections, bronchitis. Mm -hmm. You might see also people getting dermatitis, which is allergies of the skin. Mm -hmm. um, those are, I, I suspect what you're telling me that is that 
Yes, but that is going to be more. Yes, that's exactly what And people what are going to suffer happen. more with these conditions. Yes, that's exactly and, what um, happen. You're saying that it's not only simple as that, but people could also develop cardiac conditions. Mm -hmm. And um, we might even see increases in lung cancer. Yes. And, and we might even see patients dying earlier than, we, than they should die. That's what the Because of showing. pollution. Yes, air pollution. Okay. Yeah. Um, is there a direct link between climate change, air pollution, and lung cancer, as far as you know? There, there is a, a, a link because prolonged exposure to these particles mm -hmm. can actually begin to affect your lungs to the point that you can get okay. cancer. Yes. Um, but you haven't, the, the, from your knowledge or your reading or your studies, you haven't seen any increases worldwide in lung cancer because of pollution? I will probably need to, to double check with the statistics right. with that, but there, there have been extensive studies on things yeah. like that. Um, yeah. and. I can probably say that there we can are, this, yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah. based on the evidence, it's yeah. I mean, um, in front. the number one cause of lung cancer is probably smoking. Yes. Um, and I think probably the number two might be nowadays pollution. Mm -hmm. um, there are other countries other than Trinidad, for example, I think in China, mm -hmm. where, from my understanding, that where the air pollution is extremely thick, mm -hmm. and, and it's been like that for many years. Right. And um, we have increased incidences of, of, of mm -hmm. lung cancer, and I, I am subject to correction on that. All right? Yeah, and, and that, like I said, it's causing <coughs> premature death. So somebody yeah. who normally would have, if you weren't exposed to the air pollution, yeah. let's say you might have lived to 80 or 85, yeah you might die at like, you know, 65 right. or something. And that, that also said. causes a, a significant um, compromise to your quality of life. Yes. Um, nobody wants to be have bad asthma all the time. Right. Um, nobody wants to spend their living years being ill. Right. Yeah. Does the face mask help? It does because what it does is it, it kind of pr provides a barrier, a physical barrier, mm -hmm. to your inhalation of these particles. Right. So the, so mask the, particle, does the help. particle doesn't pass through the face mask? No. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, th and that's why you see sometimes in those Asian countries, yeah. even before COVID, yeah. where there's high levels of pollution, like in China, you yeah. would see that those countries, a lot of the citizens used to wear masks all the time. It's because of how bad the pollution was. Do you think we should be wearing the face mask in Trinidad because of, of pollution? I think persons who have pre-existing conditions, yeah. it's a good idea for you to continue with the face mask because you will tend to be it's more susceptible. Right, and it has nothing to do with COVID, right? We're talking no, about no. air pollution and, and, yeah. and people who have asthma or people have um, allergies and, and so. what I can definitely recommend is that <coughs> if you are maybe in a industry yeah. or you're in an environment where there are high levels of pollution yeah. um, then I would say you definitely should take that precaution and to wear, wear the mask. Yeah. Um, other than respiratory illnesses which mm -hmm. you've quite wonderfully explained um, what other illnesses can we expect because of climate change? Okay so there is another effect of climate change that really is a little scary for us in Trinidad and Tobago, yeah. and that's due to changes in precipitation and water quality I agree. brought on by flooding. I agree. So during periods of intense rainfall, we know we get flooding. Yeah. And the issue with flooding is that what happens is pollutants from the soil, from your cesspit, yeah. sewage, and things like that can get into watercourses. Yeah. And then these watercourses, people use them for different household activities. Yeah. People use water from rivers to yeah. irrigate their crops. And yeah. more importantly, with the flooding we're seeing now, people are coming into direct contact, skin to skin contact, yeah. with that contaminated water that has a lot of pathogens in it. Right. So the flooding can really exacerbate the spread of waterborne diseases that we're seeing. Right. And when we talk about waterborne diseases, we're talking about things like Salmonella, E. coli. It can also spread things like, we in Trinidad know it as gastro, yeah. as gastroenteritis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're seeing more cases like that. Yeah, I mean, these things present with diarrhea and vomiting. Yes. Um, diarrheal diseases is a big problem in Trinidad and Tobago, mm -hmm. most of the past, yep. um, in pediatric populations, people in the 70s and 80s remember kids getting really sick with gastro and mm -hmm. having to get rehydration, fluids and stuff like that. We still, I mean, we really want to go back to those days, right? No. And um, if the quality of the water is compromised, mm -hmm. um, we're going to see more of those problems because of flooding. Exactly. Um, it, water quality is extremely important mm -hmm. to, to help to, to, to the for public health um, practitioner. Mm -hmm. um, what, what other sort of illnesses and diseases other than diarrheal diseases would we see from poor water quality or flooding? Okay, so you can also see things like leptospirosis yeah. being well, spread. Um, just got a brief explanation of what leptospirosis is, if you could. So leptospirosis is something that's really spread by the urine of rats, I believe. Yeah. Um, 
You're the medical expert. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. But so yeah, you know people, people, get, people get really sick from leptospirosis. Yes, um, I know it can be fatal in some it issues. It can be fatal cases. in some issues yeah. and some cases. And I suppose the thing that we see a lot of GPs, most when you passed, but we've seen up to up to now, but mosquito-borne illnesses. Right. That that is a real being to, to, to people in Trinidad and Tobago. Um, kids get sick, kids get de dengue, adults get it as well, obviously. Mm -hmm. In Trinidad, we saw a chikagunya, chick V outbreak. I mean, it was globally, as, mm -hmm. of course, originally, but people suffered with from chikagunya, right. chick V. Um, I think they suffered more mm -hmm. than the books and the researchers told us they were going to they're suffer, going to, yes. in my personal opinion, based on my talking to my patients in my little practice. Mm -hmm. um, I see people really, really, with severe joint pains. And um, when Chick V first came to Trinidad, I mean, it was in, I think it was in Africa before he came yes. to the Caribbean. Um, this, this was not here in the Caribbean before. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and the African, the, the doctors in Africa were saying that, that Chick V is, is very serious and the patients get arthralgia and sometimes they can get lifelong. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, thinking about it, it was really hard to conceptualize that. And it's hard to conceptualize that beforehand, you know, that patients would suffer yeah. so much from and, and get this severe arthralgia. I mean, it really was a slap in the face when patients started coming in with, with chick reinfections and, and the sequelae of it. And I mean, I remember the first few patients that I saw with these severe joint pains and swollen hands. I, I referred them to the rheumatologist. I thought they had rheumatoid arthritis. Right. It, it was so it was so dramatic, you know. It, mm -hmm. It's actually heart wrenching to people see these people coming in with with severe pains. So I mean, these these things like pollution and and, and waterborne illnesses, to somebody not in the medical field, they might say, well, all right, fine, whatever. Mm -hmm. But to somebody in the medical field that actually see people who suffer from these illnesses and the actual patients who actually get it and say so it compromises their life, it's not easy. So that's that's another one of the issues that we're seeing with how climate change can infect health, and that's vector-borne diseases. Vector -borne, and that's the yeah, same that's thing mosquitoes that we're seeing. And, that's mosquitoes and, and, and dengue. And like that. Yes. And in this country, people end up in hospital. It, it, it really takes a lot out here when they get dengue, you know. Um, so, unfortunately, so people still die in Trinidad from dengue. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, not, I mean, that's the testing nature of the illness. Sometimes you do everything you could do as a doctor, as a medical, mm -hmm. as a healthcare system, public or private, and you fight for the patient, but sometimes they die. Yeah. And um, that's... that's and, and if we could do things and do measures and implement procedures and protocols, accept what's coming and fight it as best as we can, we could stop suffering of people yes. and stop the patients from suffering. So, and that's um, why public health researchers like you are very important. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm glad that you're on the program talking to the public. So, so what we actually do have mm -hmm. right now, um, I know there's some work being done on the GIS mapping yeah. of these vector-borne diseases. Okay. So after extreme flooding events now, yes. we can check and see where which areas are more yeah. likely to have an outbreak of you know dengue or these vector borne diseases especially the ones spread by mosquitoes so exactly. that is that is work being done integrated kind of, work yeah, integrated work to kind of be preventative yeah and so people can be aware from before yeah. from before and take those precautions to avoid getting these diseases yeah. and, and then also you have a personal responsibility to prevent exactly. your, your, your train your fringe in your water yeah and, and your, also I mean, we all know <laughs> I know we also we always hear it you know don't leave the bucket of water outside yeah. but yeah. you really yeah. need to take these precautions you need to take it. Yeah, it's very important. It sounds simple, but it's extremely important, yes. when it, especially when you get sick. Mm -hmm. um, what other um, health effects? I mean, we just touched on two there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so another big one with climate change is what we're seeing <clears throat> is extreme heat and drought. Like I mentioned yeah. before, with climate change in the Caribbean, you're seeing extremes. Yes. So we have the extreme with the water quality and the flooding. Yes. And we also have the other extreme where we're seeing more heat and more drought. Right. So. What we re recent research is showing that extreme heat can worsen non-communicable diseases, so it can make your respiratory or your cardiovascular disease worse. That's a real good, important point. Yeah. And, and as a medical professional, <laughs> I just going to add in there that because I see we have cardiovascular patients, right? Mm -hmm. And we have patients who suffer, but hydration yes. is so important. Mm -hmm. It's so important to your health and and, and, and and avoiding heart attacks, avoiding cardiovascular complications. Mm -hmm. Your hydration status is extremely important um, yeah, for your kidney health. So I'm um, glad you brought up the kidneys yeah, because they are there have actually been comprehensive studies okay. in different places around the world, even okay. in Latin America and South America, yeah. which is which is along the same temperature yeah, 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 yeah. level as Latin America, China, America and South America, America. Trinidad, same. And what the evidence has shown is that heat can cause acute kidney injury. Yes. And prolonged acute kidney injury can lead to renal failure eventually. Exactly. Eventually. Yeah. And yeah. what we don't want to see is 
more and more people needing dialysis because you yeah. know once your kidneys fail, yeah. Yeah. you either need a transplant or yeah. dialysis. Good point. Uh, more, more to the extreme of, of, of dehydration, really. Yeah. Um, and dehydration is, a, is a, in my, is, for me, it's a very important topic because obviously when you're dehydrated, you're more prone to kidney stones, urine infections. Mm -hmm. um, so all it ties back, everything is just a web that ties back, you know? Yeah. Um, but you're more prone to kidney infections, urine infections, kidney stones, and um, you're more prone to low mood, yeah. believe it or not, mm -hmm. um, fatigue, mm -hmm. headaches, body pains, mm -hmm. and aches from dehydration. Mm -hmm. So um, the concept is that we always, I mean, every doctor in Trinidad and, and every patient know that you go to the doctor, the doctor tells you drink more water, yeah. right? And everybody laugh at it, but it, it, it's it really, really based on, on, it really is important, yeah. and it's based on the fact that, it, that, that all these different symptoms are related to, to dehydration, mm -hmm. and that we underhydrated generally in Trinidad, but things have improved. People walk around with bottles of water now and drinking, yeah. um, and, and, and mild dehydration gives you a lot of effects like tired all the time and, and a lot of the complaints or, or symptoms that people have. So if so actually we could, pull up, in if we could pull up slide six, there's a good graphic on how heat, yeah, yeah. heat stress can yeah. affect our bodies. Yeah. Um, so we, you, can, you can experience heat exhaustion or heat stroke and like you yeah. said, there's headaches, nausea, vomiting, fatigue, fatigue. like you mentioned, yeah, yeah. anxiety, poor yeah. coordination. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it really is yeah, important. My exam there. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So extreme heat is really, and what they call the extreme heat, they say that it's a silent killer yeah. because people don't realize yeah. how this heat is affecting your body internally yeah. until it's too late, yeah. and you know you either have a heart attack. You see that tired all the time. Yeah. And I'm not feeling like I have my mojo. Mm -hmm. um, drink more water. Yeah. <laughs> it might be a, a simple solution, you mm -hmm. know. Um, so other than heat, heat. Um, heat stroke, symptoms of dehydration, which could cause kidney problems. Mm -hmm. um, what, what other effects are there? Of, of, of heat uh, or he climate change? Of, or, on our health, from, from either heat or anything else. Okay, so another thing that we're seeing now uh -huh. is we're getting more zoonotic diseases. Right. And the big one with zoonotic diseases, yeah, we just came out of one, yeah. COVID-19. So right. just to explain for people who may not be familiar, yeah. zoonotic diseases are infectious diseases that are spread from animals to humans. Right. And the reason we, uh, we expect to see more zoonotic diseases yeah. because of climate change is because when you have deforestation happening yeah. and people come more in, in closer contact with wild animals. You have yeah. a, a higher chance of coming into contact with these animals who have pathogens that our bodies just cannot fight. Yeah. They, those are pathogens that are unfamiliar to us. Yeah. So we find that we're seeing more crossover in those diseases from animals to humans. All right, so that's like a, a, a super point. Mm -hmm. um, so you're saying because of deforestation, mm -hmm. which causes climate change, and climate change causing further effects on the on the earth, mm -hmm. um, that we are coming in more in contact with with animals. Yes. And with animal wild diseases. Animals, yeah. And there's crossover. Exactly. Um, big question. Um, the, the, I mean, the COVID-19 pandemic, right? Mm -hmm. We just came out of the COVID-19 pandemic. You will not be able to have the definite answer to this mm -hmm. question because nobody does, right? right? But the explanation we were initially given, and I mean, the world could back me up on this, is that somebody in China ate bat soup. While we, we will never know whether that was the case or not, but we do know <laughs> that COVID-19 is a... Sound like might give you more gastroenteritis than COVID-19, but go on. Exactly, it's a, it's a... Did you hear that? I did, of course. Yeah, we all, the whole world heard, heard that, right? Yeah, we all heard this. Um, and unfortunately, we probably will never know. But do you think COVID-19 came about because of climate change? In your personal opinion, this has nothing to do with any institution that you're working for. This is your personal opinion based on your reading. Climate change may have had a role to play. Yeah. I don't want to say it was caused by it. Yeah. Because again, we never know the exact circumstance of how it went. How yeah. the disease went from animals to humans. Yeah. But there is evidence to show that it could have been a possible cause. Well, so, are we going to see more viral pandemics because of climate change? Most likely, yes. Because most like likely, I said, yes. as, as you see, as you come into contact with these animals, more and more frequently, yeah. there is more opportunity for these pathogens to yeah. jump across from the animals to us. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so um, we're more likely to see more viral pandemics in the future. Yes. Unless we reverse climate change? Unless we, the thing with climate change is that is we're almost at a point where we might not be able to reverse the damage that we'd, we, we've done, but we can stop it or we can slow it down significantly. All right. All right. So if we take those measures to kind of build back the environment and bring it back to a state yeah. that it was maybe 10 years ago, yeah. we can kind of say that we're not going to see these extreme circumstances yeah. that we've been seeing. Yeah, I, I, I think um, 
my personal opinion, mm -hmm. uh, we never saw a viral pandemic from up, it was 100 years later. Mm -hmm. 100 years ago, this cat has been in the bag for 100 years. Right. Something must have happened. Mm -hmm. Medicine is not like that. If something is, is not happening, it's not happening. Something must have happened to let this cat out of the bag after 100 years. Mm -hmm. and, and it didn't stay where it was. Yeah. It, came, it came directly against the humans mm -hmm. and spread and, and infected us. And I, I mean, maybe climate change might be a, a significant impact on uh, cause of that. Mm -hmm. um, so viral pandemics are a possibility because of climate change. Yeah. Um, Good. Do you have any other points on, on our any impact on our health? So no, we, we discussed the vector borne diseases, yeah. the zoonotic diseases, we talked about the extreme heat and drought, yes. we talked about the impact of flooding and yes. the waterborne diseases. If I can just go back to the waterborne diseases yes. on important points, um, especially with the flooding, yeah. that could also affect our crops and our food, which we didn't yeah. touch on because yeah. I know we in Trinidad, we often hear during a flooding event, yeah. once you're buying local crops, you need to wash them. And that is not bad advice. That is actually excellent advice. Because yeah. what happens is that sometimes these crops get inundated with these floodwaters yeah. that do have pathogens and pollutants in them. Yeah. And so we need to take those precautions to wash our food properly, even if you do it in a, a bleach, yeah. bleach dilution to kill those pathogens. So the flooding can also affect not just the actual water that we're coming into contact with, but yeah. our food. So yeah. there, are, there are tons of knockoff effects yeah. on the climate change and what we eat. All right, um, Janice, now is a good time for us to take a second break, um, and, and then we'll be back in one minute. All right, guys, so we're here with um, Ms. Janice Tyson. She's going to us a really um, educated explanation of uh, the health effects because of climate change. Right, guys, so I just I'd like to formally invite you again. Um, today is Wednesday, the 7th of December, 2020. Too. It's a live program. Send in your questions, give us your comments, join the discussion, help us move it along. All right, guys, we'll be back in one moment. <laughs> ACTN The Voice welcomes you to join us for our newest agricultural television series, Harvest. Welcome to Harvest. We're doing it double again, north and south. This morning, we start here in Brazil Village on Bethany Estate with Michael and Jacinta Mill. You can look forward to a personalized tour around scenic Trinidad and Tobago, showcasing different agricultural practices and teaching us self-sustenance. So, Wendy, you're about to show me your bromeliad house. Yes. Oh, this is lovely. This is this is what our customers refer to as the mecca for bromeliads. Explore the many ways to make your harvest right for you. So our chicken coop is more or less based at, uh, built at a height whereby it's easy for us to go and just remove the, the wood shavings into our barrow. Now, you don't plant out your seedlings, you buy the seedlings, yes. right? You purchase our seedlings. Here we are on a not quite monocrop site, but we have rows of tomatoes, rows of sweet peppers, and then you have the mills polyculturing. Join us every Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. Harvest, a new dimension in agriculture. Merry Christmas from all of us at ACTN The Voice. the word it serves a purpose it serves a purpose because you serve a purpose when you hear no I want you to think next so if, if God didn't let me do that next Jesus didn't call them to leave their boats he called them to push out a little it's a little decision so that I would rely on the grace of God it's the blessing of both All right, guys, welcome back. We're here with uh, Ms. Janice Tyson sending your questions on um, climate change and effect on our health. All right, your comments are appreciated as well. So, Janice, I mean, you gave us a really good explanation of the different types of health effects, um, really, really in depth. But um, so, so you're a health researcher and, you, and, you, and you're working in university with, with doing um, climate change and, and marrying that with healthcare. Yes. All right. Um, how, how does your research or your work or the work of your, your, your groupings mm -hmm. in, the, in the university, how, how is that going to help us or help the patients avoid or mitigate 
the effects of climate change in terms of the health. Do you understand my question? I understand your question. What is the value? And I hate mm -hmm. to say this word because I want to devalue what you're doing, mm -hmm. but I need to understand. Right. What is the value of your work to the average man on the street? Okay. So the value of my work is right here. A big yeah. part of it is public education. Public education. Because if people don't understand how the environment and the climate yeah. affects their health, yeah. then they won't be proactive to take steps to fix it. So one right. of the big things we're focused on is really public education and getting that awareness about how people can take ownership of their health mm -hmm. and even prevent themselves from getting some of the diseases or the illnesses that we talked about before. Right. Another big thing that we, we're trying to advocate for is changes in policies and how governments deal with climate change and health because obviously it's all well and good for private citizens to mm -hmm. do what they need to do but the fact is some people will inevitably get ill and we need to have the systems in place mm -hmm. to treat with these people when they come in because what the, some of the evidence is showing is that mm -hmm. climate change will cause a much heavier burden on the healthcare system right. and the healthcare system needs to be prepared mm -hmm. for this I want to say influx of people who are coming in because if like I said we talked about more people getting cancer, more cardiovascular disease, mm -hmm. those people have to get treatment in the hospital. Mm -hmm. And if we're having much more higher levels of these people coming in, mm -hmm. the healthcare system needs to be ready mm -hmm. to handle these patients. You know, we don't want to mm -hmm. have a case where you have to wait 10 years to mm -hmm. get some treatment. So yeah. we one of the big things are advocating for policy changes and healthcare system changes to treat with these effects when they happen. Right. Mm -hmm. um, that's that's like an increased allocation of resources to, to treat because yes. of climate change. Mm -hmm. um, but how about the delivery, other than uh, increased allocation, how about the delivery of healthcare services, uh, services mm -hmm. let's say 10 years from now because of climate change? How, how, would, how would that look like? Um, hard question to, to understand. What I mean is, um, climate change will cause increased flooding, mm -hmm. um, in, increase problems and increased accessibility. For example, people found it really hard to go to the grocery this week. Right. To have groceries in part of this country that have, the people are cut off from the grocery. Mm -hmm. um, I, I really do suspect what people were cut off from the health center as well. That um, I, I don't live in an area that happened, mm -hmm. but I suspect people that they had people that s who were sick isolated. There were two um, instances of that okay. on the news just this week. Actually, there were some elderly patients down yeah. south who the army had to go get them to, so they could get to their right. dialysis treatment. Right, and then yes. um, climate change, flooding, traffic, mm -hmm. um, congested health centers. Mm -hmm. It obviously, it's crying out for innovative, creative solutions. Right. Um, what are some of the solutions in your opinion? Okay, so one of the solutions that we really could adopt is yeah. telemedicine and telehealth. Yeah. So that way, if perchance you are cut off from physically accessing a health center, yeah. If you have that ability to reach out to your doctor by a video call or by a telephone mm -hmm. call or mm -hmm. video conference, mm -hmm. that sucks because sometimes patients just have some questions that they need answering. So mm -hmm. rather than you going into a health center to get those to get those questions answered, you yeah. can probably do a quick chat with yeah. either your nurse or your doctor and get those answers that you need. So one of the ways we can counteract those issues with accessing healthcare is telemedicine. Telemedicine. Yeah. Um, I suppose, in, in my opinion, um, just like in other countries, bigger countries, mm -hmm. bigger countries, um, increase resources towards remote health workers. Mm -hmm. Get it, they're moving it, moving it really to a community-driven approach. I'm moving from a community to a household-driven approach. Right. So doctors on the road, beating it on the, on, in, going towards the, the, the homes mm -hmm. of where these patients are located. And so we, we do have systems like that with the district health visitors. But I'm talking about a ramping up because we, we're yeah, going to expect it. What we it. probably need to have is more of these. these and, and a full issues. movement towards digitalization of, of, of health services and yes. digitalization of data. Mm -hmm. of the um, of the of the notes and so on yes um and and, and, and remote work and disasters and stuff i don't think people paper management is is the way to go and then we never know in, in a case of flooding you never know if your patient files could get damaged yeah, as well yeah, so there's many really benefits to having an electronic system Listen. um what can we do about this all of this what how can we how, what can Trinidad and Tobago do to, to, to negate the effects of climate change? Okay. Trinidad and Tobago, not only on a personal level, as, as the patient level or the audience level, but what can we do as a country? So what I could say we could do as a country, some of these are <coughs> government and yeah. 
private citizens as well. What okay. one of the biggest things we could do is we really need. Well, what to are reduce, we doing? We really need to reduce our energy consumption. Yeah. Because in Trinidad, especially, we have this culture of you know using a lot of electricity and gas because it's been cheap for a number yeah. of years, and yeah. that's kind of given rise to some bad habits. Yeah. You know, even in in large buildings, office buildings, there's yeah. no need for the lights to be on all night. Yeah. Even at when at home, you know, people tend to you need something. At yeah. 8 a.m., you're on, you drive all the road, you come back. And then at mm -hmm. 12, you drive all the road and you come back again. We really mm -hmm. need to reduce our energy because this burning of fossil fuels is one of the main drivers of climate change. Right. We also need to really start investing in alternative energy. And what would work best for us in Trinidad is solar energy. Yeah. Um, we have enough sunlight yeah. that we could really have solar energy, solar water heaters yeah. and solar power that can power our homes. Yeah. Um, so those are two big things that, that we could solar do. Solar power. Yeah, solar power is something. And the is it being used in other power, countries efficiently, solar power? It is, and it is being used in Trinidad as mm -hmm. well. You are seeing more homes investing in it because it does pay off in the long run. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it has been proven to be effective. Isn't solar energy expensive? It used to be, mm -hmm. but the price has dropped dramatically over the last two decades so it's mm -hmm. becoming more and more accessible for people to to mm -hmm. buy and set up at their homes okay so you're saying that 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 we as a government and, and people and, mm -hmm. and a country moving forward together that we need to move towards solar energy alternative energy and alternative energy, energy yeah, but sources. like i said solar is so, probably so, one of the best ones for us in turn right might, might be more applicable yes um about like wind energy as well so wind energy is a little you tend to need a lot more space for wind energy yeah. and you need specific conditions that might not be ideal for Trinidad. Yeah. So that's why I say solar energy is really one that we can tap into quickly and get right. the results we want. Right. Mm -hmm. Is the major cause of, of uh, the hydrocarbons, you say, is, is a big problem, right? Yes. The burning of hydrocarbons, mm -hmm. as you say, um, and using, the, using the, the electricity and, and, and cars driving yes. on the roads and so on. But I mean, the big question is this, eh? You have, you have a, Trinidad is a developing country. Mm -hmm. You have people that suddenly that might be working hard and suddenly make an increase in income, mm -hmm. suddenly have a little bit extra pocket money, maybe, um, and moving up in the world, right? Right. Unless there's a, a serious governmental change. I mean, it's it really hard to expect a man not to buy a car. No, no, we, we're not saying that you can't buy a car. Absolutely yeah. not. Yeah. Um, but what I'm saying is that you need to be more conscious of the way you use your vehicle. And it's and it really hard to expect somebody not to build an extra room in their house and not to, <laughs> not to buy extra electrical equipment and not to use more electrical consumption. Isn't, isn't it natural to expect as people grow economically mm -hmm. that their consumption will grow? That is true. And that is part of the reason we're seeing the effects we're seeing now. Yeah. Because over the last couple of decades, that's what happened. People yeah had more disposable income yeah. and they started using more energy yeah. but as nice as it would be i'm not saying you don't buy your cars or you don't use the electronics it's yeah. just be mindful with how you use them yeah. you don't need to have four tvs on at the house just yeah. playing and nobody's watching them <laughs> so this is really just to be mindful you don't have to drastically change yeah. the way you operate yeah. but you really just need to be mindful and reduce where you can um is it is it reasonable to expect and this is your personal opinion again mm -hmm. not nothing to do with any organization we may be attached mm -hmm. but is it really reasonable to expect a country like Trat Tobago mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean our, we, our bread and butter mm -hmm. is, is hydrocarbons and mm -hmm. um, oil and gas Trinidad is a oil and gas economy and when we don't have oil and gas, or, we not, or there's no market for it, we see a recession, mm -hmm. right? It goes up and it goes down. How realistic is it to expect that Trinidad and Tobago could, could balance that hydrocarbon-based economy with responsible climate change policy? So the thing is... Do you understand my question? I understand your question, yeah. and of course... That is a question that people ask. Yes. Yeah, so All over the world, people are asking that question. Of course, we know that... You need energy. Countries all over the world need energy to survive. And yeah. if we have the energy to, to, to export it and we can benefit financially from that, then fine, that's what we've been doing. Yeah. But what we are also seeing is that a lot of countries are doing a shift towards renewable energy. So there yeah. will come a point when the demand for gas might not be as high as it is 
-hmm. now. So it really is a good time, I would say, to invest in renewables because mm -hmm. we don't, with the shift that we're seeing now with government policies all over the world, mm -hmm. there's, uh, you're finding more and more restrictions on the use of gas mm -hmm. and more incentives towards renewable energy. So you really have to find, and I mean, that's for people in government, mm -hmm. um, for them to decide that balance of how you figure out your growing economy with what's really important for your environment and additionally the health of your citizens. I felt like, like um, let me, right now Europe is starved of energy, right? Mm -hmm. And prices of energy are extremely high. It's, is, Europe, is Europe pushing towards green or is, or is it Europe going, oh, oh no, we, don't, we, we have no time to go to green. We need to burn our hydrocarbons to survive for our people to get through winter. Which way is it going in Europe? I think you're seeing a little bit of both because yeah. some countries have a very hard push towards renewable energies yeah. um, and that's more the Nordic countries yeah. but other countries who just don't have the capacity have yeah. to fall back on the gas where they are yeah. so there really is a mix of, of both going on. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I, I saw from the news that um, from the recent conferences that there might be a fund set up for countries like mm -hmm. ours who, or, or small island states or, or island the damage and loss damage. fund. Can you explain that to our people? So what that is is within the last I want to say 50 years yeah. those developed countries yeah. when they had their yeah. big expansion in technology yeah. and you know people are having a higher standard of living yeah. they used up a lot of energy oh, so yeah. they have been emitting greenhouse gases and carbon dioxide yeah. for much longer than yeah. Caribbean countries might have been yeah. so what the fund is set up to do it's not really a, a penalty system yeah. but it makes them accountable yeah. for their actions in the past right. because it's not fair that small island states who have not really been emitting that much we suffer the brunt we suffer the brunt of it when yeah. they have gotten the benefits of utilizing the energy yeah. and they're not necessarily experiencing yeah. the effects that we are experiencing yeah. so that's what it, it is um, really is a recuperation mechanism and right. um, Josh you have a question coming in there from a view uh, what are some of the short and medium term actions that Trinidad can take to better equip ourselves against the effect of climate change as it relates to health and what actions are already being taken at this time um, I, th I think you're kind of addressing some of it. Yeah. Um, um, we're addressing some of it. The actions that, that we are taking is um, we are formulating policy yeah. um, with the expectation of increased numbers. Mm -hmm. um, the, the effects of climate change, we are pushing it at a personal level. Yes. We're bringing people towards our awareness about the effects of hydrocarbons. Mm -hmm. um, programs like this and people like you are coming to on programs like this to educate the public about the effects and, this, and the health effects yes. so that it's quote and mitigate it. Mm -hmm. um, but that does not um, negate that the overall responsibility is a national policy responsibility yes. and, and the responsibility is to the man who sits in the chair mm -hmm. of, of government. Mm -hmm. um, and we could just do our part, um, we could agree on, on policies and we could be, we could, we could, we could come together as a country to negate those effects and agree on the policy and, and, and work out because, um, and work on it because all of us in the same boat. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Korea, there, north, there's south, climate, east, west, climate mustard, ketchup, everybody, everybody going to be affected. affected yeah. Rich, poor. Exactly. It does not discriminate. So it really does not discriminate. It's, it's, it's an issue that we all need to be concerned about. All right. Um, mm -hmm. Josh, you have another question there? Hi, good night. Great topic. What about improving our infrastructure, drainage, etc. as well? Yes, that's very um, important. Talk to that just for two seconds. Yeah. Especially um, with what we're seeing with, us, with the floods right now. We really, yeah. what happened is that we had a big expansion of housing and the housing the the infrastructure couldn't keep up yeah. with the increased rainfall yeah. and the new changing land use patterns so yeah. we really need to have a, a i would say a national review of our drainage systems yeah. and how our water courses are diverted to, right. to help um, we have about two more minutes mm -hmm. and in that two minutes i really want you to spend bringing up that graph there that you have with the health effects mm -hmm. of um, of climate change. Yes. If you could so just to leave you, if we could get slide four, it's really just to leave you this, with yeah. an overall right. overview so if you could of the if you could relate that to the viewers of there. Change. So like I said, climate change, we're going to see rising temperatures, we're going to see rising sea levels, and all those things have impacts on air pollution, changes in vector-borne diseases, um, increasing allergies like asthma and those types of things, water quality impacts, um, for example, the waterborne diseases mm -hmm. and extreme heat, like we said, is a silent killer mm -hmm. and the severe weather 
dry, dry mm -hmm. seasons, wetter wet seasons. Mm -hmm. And it could also affect, more importantly, our water and our food supply. Malaria, dengue, yes. um, Lyme disease, and more other countries, mm -hmm. chikungunya, which yes. we well know here. Mm -hmm. And Zika as well. Zika as well. Mm -hmm. um, all right, that's fine there. Yeah. Josh? Um, so, um, Janice, um, we've come to the end of the program. Um, it, it, it was a little slant, a little different to our normal, our normal sort of program, as you would know. Yes. I know you're avid viewer up there. <laughs> um, the, uh, our program is basically heavily medical, mm -hmm. but, but the world has changed. Yes. And the time has come. Mm -hmm. And action is being taken all over the world. Mm -hmm. And um, we need to know how that's going to affect our health. Mm -hmm. And we need to know, and we need to also advocate for policy changes mm -hmm. and um, support organizations like you and the people that you work with in the university mm -hmm. to help us create a better future for Trinidad and, and help us create a, a sustainable environment for our children, our and children's our children generations. and generations to come and that they are healthy as well and they live out to their complete life potential yes. without seeing the negative impacts mm -hmm. of polluting the environment. Yeah. And um, if I could just leave you all with yeah, go one ahead. thing, it's that the environment affects everything we do. We need clean air to breathe, we need clean water to drink and we need safe food to eat. So yeah. the environment really has a big impact on our health. Yeah. We have moved from the unthinkable to the, to the, to the thinkable, to, to the possible, the reality. Yeah. It's unthinkable what you just said, that, oh, that we, we actually might not get proper air to breathe and so on. Mm -hmm. And it's actually becoming a reality. Um, all right, guys. So um, thanks again. I would just like to thank my guest, Ms. Janice Tyson. Um, let's thank you, each and every one of you at home for viewing tonight. And we'll see you again next week. All right, guys. So have a pleasant evening. Take care of yourself. God bless everyone. And we'll see you again next week. Take care now. Thanks, Janice.